Welcome back to another episode of the Winner's Culture. We like to highlight the journey to success and not the glory that it brings. I'm here with my co-host to the left. Hey, y'all. It's Blondie. And then to my right. It's just JJ. Y'all know the motto, man. Just Daryl, one R, one Y, one L. The desert do need sand. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> How y'all feeling today, yo? Y'all cool? Everybody cool? Y'all good? It's hot. It is hot. hot. It's a hot one today. Very hot. It's a hot one today. But listen, we got a real special episode. I say that every week because every episode is special. Um, but this week, we got another another woman that is doing her thing for years, not only just in the city, but in general. And then she's blessed us with her presence today. We got Imani of Pish Posh with us. How you feeling today? Okay. What's going How are you? on? <laughs> How are you? Good. How was your day? <laughs> Everybody was hot today. Yo, Listen, we hot. all on the same page. We all starting from the same spot. I felt the same way. Heat. I felt even hotter because we got to turn the air on. I can't wait till the fall. Oh my gosh, me too. I love the fall. I feel like when we say that though, the fall and the winter come around. Like, you mad? I'm never. I feel, the, I feel the same way though. When it get too cold and it hurt. <laughs> you sound like an old person. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yo, let's let's get into it. You know, you see. <laughs> but but so, Amani, can you tell us a little bit about your background, where you from? You know, how you grew up, all that. Yeah, so I'm from North Philly. Um, most of my family was always from like the Gerard area, from like Vaughn Gardens, Richard Island. Um, like uh, I would say like the little poppy land <laughs> That's cool. That's area fun. as well too. I'm just meaning like my family in general. Um, yeah, I just grew up around Gerard. I went to Gerard College from okay. the first to the seventh grade, and um, yeah, I went to a lot of kind of different schools. I don't know. You gotta be more specific. Okay, so I know you from running track, running fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you went to Swinson, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember specifically in the 200 meter race because one of my good friends, shout out to Jada, love you to death. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you smoked her, so I was, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Who is this girl?" I'm cranking. You, you see what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I never got a chance to meet you until the uh, "What I Wish I Knew" event. Shout out to shout Manny. Out to Manny. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and I had to tell you that. And then I seen Pishbosh too. I seen Pishbosh from back. Somewhere in, in college time, mm-hmm. um, yo, you was drawing from Bobby. I don't, you remember Bobby? Yeah. That, that went to West? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, so I was like, yeah, you got to come and, and talk about how that whole thing went. So what was the, the transition like? Because to be that fast, you had to practice. Like, you had to be in it. Mm-hmm. Like, what was the transition like from sports to, like? So I ran since I was nine years old. So okay. I've always been training. Yeah. To, you know, become a state champ. That was, like, my th- Goal. So yeah. yeah, I just really just made it happen. Um, practicing every day. Uh, even if I didn't make it to practice, I was practicing in the neighborhood, running around the block. Right. Like it was like real hardcore. <laughs> right. Is that and, what you went to college for? Mm-hmm. So I got track scholarship full ride um, to A and T. Congratulations. And I mean, my track current career did end there because I started pitch bash. So can you tell us about like how that went that that transitionary period? So that transition, um, I don't know. College is definitely different on a sports level. It's more business For oriented. Sure. So I didn't feel happy anymore with it. Okay, it was just like felt like a job. Yeah, it felt more like a job. And I mean, I've always been painting as well too. I learned how to paint when I was in the first grade at Gerard College, mm-hmm. and I always just was like top artist in the class, like always getting awards everywhere. And then mm-hmm. I, I did like a few different like programs around the city. Um, so when I'm in college, I'm like, I need to make some cash. I couldn't work a job because I had study hall practice and stuff like that. So I'm like, let me just, you know, paint some stuff and sell it. Mm -hmm. And it really just went from there, took off from there. Like the first piece I dropped, I sold it that exact day. And Uh from there, I just took that money, flipped it back in and just kept like. Kept doing it. Yeah. Um, then I went to the coach my junior year. I'm like, hey, can I just be the team manager? (laughs) Because I don't want to run anymore. And he let me keep my scholarship for like a. Uh, that year too as well. What year is this? Um, junior year. Junior wow. year. So you mm-hmm. made it three years. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I just was like after that, full bloom, pish posh every day. Wow. That's shout out to coach. He let you. Yeah. Keep he was thorough. Like, mm-hmm. He let you keep the scholarship and still. That's crazy. So I feel like, like when you was going into, first of all, like 
when when you first made the decision to like stop doing track, were the, were your teammates cool with that? Was your was your coach cool with that? Like, um, the- I think so. Yeah, my coach, we pretty had like a a great like connection, like bond. Like I think he was understanding. Okay, just so wasn't he working it was out. Like, he, yeah, he it was like over me because so I was just like, um, kind of over it. The only person I would say was my mom. She was just mm-hmm. like. It's probably just like a hobby. She didn't understand the capacity of what I was doing at the time. So she just like, it's a hobby, you know. And also, I studied pre-law, so I was straight supposed to go to law school and just right. do that. So she just was like, you're about to mess up everything. Yeah. And uh, it was crazy. But she was probably more so the only one. But now she's understanding to it. She understands the capacity. I had brought her down to one of my shows in North Carolina. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was funny. Like, I see what's going on now. Mm-hmm. I feel that. I was about to say, so, like, what, how, how does your mom feel, like, now after seeing? Um, yeah, she, like, once I brought her down to that fast show, because I wasn't officially established yet. Like, that's one thing. I just, because I think I'm an artist, and I was, like, more so go with the flow. I didn't know all the ins and outs of business and stuff until I got to uh, specific classes in law mm-hmm. where it was, like, the business law class. And I'm like, oh, I got to do this, this, that. Mm-hmm. And when my, after my mom came down for that fashion show, she went ahead and got my LLC, business license, all that and stuff. And yeah, just made it a corporation. Okay. Um, and she wants to even, like, start, because she's into, like, uh, smoothies and stuff. So she wants to start, like, a smoothies truck, but call it, like, Pitch by Smoothies, but it'll be under the, like, kind of umbrella. So, yeah, she just went all in, really did that, and, like, paid for all that for me. So now uh, she's, like, really on board. Like, yeah. I mean, stuff. you, you kind of you did it now. Like, yeah. it kind of is what it is mm-hmm. at this point. <laughs> yeah. I feel like what so you said you went to North Carolina A and T was was that your only offer? No, I got a few offers Gross. from a lot of PWIs, Morgan. I was actually really gonna go to um Pittsburgh. Um A and T was my last recruit visit. Okay. I was like I looked at them like vacations, so I was like when to get out of school. So I was like, let me just take this last recruit visit. Although I was about to sign a pit. You said you looked at and them like I, vacations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw like, you know, they'd be hyped, they'd be like, Oh, where you wanna go to eat? Red Lobster, like. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, um, I was like, let me go down to a and I went with um, a friend of mine, Amy. Um, we both was looking or whatever. And I just liked the environment. Mm-hmm. Just a bunch of black people, like, just straight on success, wanted to elevate. And especially on sports, I had, once I got there, was like, you know what? This whole time I've been pushing to get to a PWI, the top predominantly white school and why do that when I can go to HBCU with my talent and elevate them that way because you know funding is low it's different just athletes always feel like we have to go to like the mm-hmm. more whiter schools but you know if you look into AT now like they're the number one track program in the country right now wow Tito, yeah. Tito went to AT didn't he mm-hmm. he did y- y- yeah. y- ran the governor. yep yeah heavy what's up Tito heavy military bull you are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was dumb good when he went to West I just thought about that no, yeah, he was. That's crazy. I think he won states too. That yeah, that's that same year, I think. Yeah, both of y'all did. So I can see how y'all was the top, the top program because y'all had all the. Mm-hmm. the well, not people. I wouldn't say while I was there. I think it started growing like immediately. Like the when I came in, this new guy, his name is Dwayne Ross. He was um, number two in the hurdles at the Olympics. He like changed the tr- the program. Wow. And it's like they had like four athletes go to the Olympics last year. Okay. Wow. So for the people who think about it, them, them athletes that's thinking about it, what it's like going to HBCU? Definitely. You're going to, although I had my thing about, like, the whole business thing, I just, it was it didn't work out for me. But I see it really work for other athletes. You know, you're around people that's like you that want to really see you win. Um, I feel like more at the PWIs, they, like, usually spit you out. So right. you, <laughs> you feel go there more connected to people. It? Yeah, it was like. You just wake up and it's just like a vibe. Like everybody's on the same frequency. It's like everybody wants to win, even if not like just with the sports, but just academics. So, I think HBCUs is really where our people need to go to, so we can build it back up. Because a lot of them are closing down, and a lot of them are converting to be PWIs because they're not getting the funding. But once we start throwing back into them, then they'll elevate. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't. Even, I thought they just closed. I didn't even know you could change into a PWI. So they yeah. just started admitting white people. No, like. Um, like converting it. Um, I don't know if you watch the show All American. Yeah. So in All American Homecoming, it shows how they're like University in Atlanta, they're 
low on funding. Mm-hmm. So what they basically do is a PWI will come over like, oh, we'll make this our branch school. We'll like combine them, but it, it's oh, more wow. so under them. Like, you know how like Penn State has multiple oh, campuses. Oh, okay, 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 like okay, okay. I see what's going on. Our school just did the same thing. We went to Bloomsburg, all of us. Yeah, it's erasing the history of it. Because like they'll go in there and convert all things, take out a lot of the African-American classes. It's, it's, just, mm. it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all know that, that Bloomsburg doing that? They Bloomsburg that, that they combined, combined with it. Lock Haven a and lot of the state school. Yeah, it's like four of them. Yeah. So like I don't even I don't think Bloom is Bloom no more. Mm. Uh-huh. So who are they under? It's it's called something different now. It's like uh, it's like four different schools under one umbrella. The Commonwealth, the Commonwealth yeah. University or something what? like that. Yeah, what? It's, it's that sounds like it's, something in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's nutty. What? Oh man, yeah, that's that's bad. But you had said that you started the brand while you were in school. Mm-hmm. Did you know exactly? Like, because you started with just, was it just paintings? Yeah. No. My first piece was actually, I went to Dollar Tree. I got a t-shirt, some bleach and a paintbrush. And, and I just did, did a design shirt. on there with bleach. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I sold it. sold it that day. $20. I know the customer, too, yeah. <laughs> who I sold it to. And from there, I just went back and got more t-shirts. The t-shirts at the Dollar Tree was a dollar. So I just, like, bought a bundle of them. And then from there, just kind of, like, took to Elevated. Them. What made you run with the name Pish Posh? So actually, I got the name from an old best friend of mine <laughs> from my okay. old neighborhood. Um, we grew up. I knew her. I met her at Gerard College. Um, but one day we was in a poppy store, and she. I had a shirt on that I had made for myself. This wasn't when I when I was selling it, but something I just made for myself. Yeah. And she was like, "That looks Pish Posh. You, you should come out with the clothing line called Pish Posh." Pish Posh. You would do that. Me yeah. though. <laughs> what did she so, mean? All right. <laughs> older white people say it. It's like to be absurd to others' opinions. Like, oh, Pish Posh. Like. Oh, you know what's crazy? Because in the meeting for this episode, right, <laughs> he kept talking about how that's what that means. And I'm like, right. that's I not what that means. Right? Like, <laughs> that's how they use it. So I was wondering why you decided to run with that name as your brand. Right. I'm like, that's how they use it. And they looking at me like, no. I think it fits me because I, I really do like some of my pieces are outspoken. It has meaning to it. So mm-hmm. it really is like right. I'm saying what I'm thinking through my work. Yeah. Um, Like I do pieces on like. Uh, like when Alter Sterling died, like a piece like um, touching on police brutality, a piece touching on like slavery, just enlightening people different ways, a piece right. on frequencies, learning right. about your chakras. Yeah. It's like kind of really touching on things that matter to me. So I think it really fits. Wow, you sound like you really read books. You be reading books. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's been a little slow lately, but I have. I'm trying to build a library. I want a library, like yeah. in my house. Yeah. So, but I have like a few books. Um, I got this book that's really good. It's by Queen Afua. She talks about like spirituality. I got Damon John book. Is it, is it Sacred Woman? Yes. Yes, I had. That I book love too. it. Yes, I love that book. Um, <laughs> I'm not, okay, I want a library too. I'm working too. on a little library too. <laughs> um, breathing books. Uh, just. A, a poor dad, rich dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got a book from Damon John. I was saying, I met him at A and T. Okay. He came there and did like a, a special program of like going to different HBCUs, doing a um, Shark Tank. Okay. So he like gifted did like you those books stuff. I got I won money not from him from somebody else. Okay. Um, she was an alumnus of A and T. She's like a millionaire. Wow. She has like a tech company or something. Mm-hmm. So and like uh, I think her name is Janice something, but she gave us like a few thousand like four different winners. Mm. Um, but it was really dope. He did give us books and stuff. Um, and he signed and stuff. It just like kind of gave us like some insight off stage and stuff. But other than that, um, for, as far as my book class, I'm trying to grow it. Yeah, no, I <laughs> can tell. Sure. Like I could, like I said, I could tell that the education is there. How do that come out in your art, or it, does that influence your art? Or um, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Or you just draw whatever. Yeah, I just draw what I feel. Kind of. I'm. I'm really. I feel like a little behind on the art scene. I feel like I'm more plugged in with fashion world. So I'm trying to get my work into galleries, like real mm-hmm. intricate mm-hmm. pieces. Cause I, I don't think people look at me for canvas artwork as much, mm-hmm. but I could do it. Okay. And I, when I've done pieces, they go. Have so. you done it? Mm-hmm. Is it on the page? Yeah. When they sell, I take them off. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Um, but I'm trying to get into galleries. I want to do exhibits, stuff like that. Um, Cause that's what's really going to go. Like, yeah, I could probably sell the jacket for like 400, but I saw a canvas piece. Mm-hmm. I saw like, like 20K. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get right. on that level and really like move it that okay. way. So you talked about the name, the name Piss Posh. Like, how did you how how did you market that to make it successful? You feel what I'm saying? Because people don't really. So that goes back to the HBCU. I yeah. think that just came naturally. I didn't have a plan. I just was like, let me 
post this, boom, it sold. <laughs> so I was just like going with the flow. Like okay. I really didn't know anything. And I, again, the HBCU just being on campus, people were like, oh, you fish posh on Instagram. Uh, and then I was like, okay, people are noticing me. Let me do something for community. So again, back to um, when Alter Sterling died, that was like my like year of like shoot take off. Mm. Um, and it wasn't even like a thing of like, let me do this specifically to market. I literally just genuinely came from my heart. I was very upset with his death. So I created a hack um, and it said, I hope I don't get killed for being black today. But when I posted it, I said, if anybody's in this area in Greensboro, bring me whatever piece of hat and I'll paint it on you for free like mm. paint it on whatever item. And from there, a lot of people hit me up, but a lot of people that weren't in Greensboro all across the country was like, oh my gosh, I want this. Could you put it on your site? And then I kind of went from there and they like kind of shut off. But also what I implemented in there, I did like a real like large photo shoot. Everybody things that I painted, we did like a like pro black photo shoot and it kind of went viral on Twitter Wow. Um, from there. And it was like most people from the campus and stuff. So from there, it just kind of shot off. And then I just... Went real hardcore with networking, finding pop-up shops, always emailing people, um, reaching out, trying to find fashion shows to get on, mm. just really, like, trying to connect. And it was, like, all over. Like, I was doing panels with, like, um, established, I was like, white business owners in Greensboro, like, mm -hmm. that own buildings downtown and stuff. Wow. Like, it was, it was like, crazy, like, how it just, and every, I, I, I got to a point where I didn't have to reach out, St things started coming. Right, right, yeah. right. You was her at mm -hmm. this point. <laughs> Century. Yeah, I got the name, the Pishbosh Girl from people, like, that just would see me. And like, you're the Pishbosh Girl. Stuck. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, let me change my Instagram today, because they call me that anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> what was the, what was the, the, the stat? stat? Yeah, it's crazy, because I was over here thinking, um, the stat that we had found, well, we was researching, and it said, like, 20% of businesses fail within two years. Mm -hmm. I think 45 fail within five. 65% uh, fail by 10, and only 25% make it to 15 plus. And when we were researching and thinking, like, what kind of tactics, tactics and strategies you have to implement to survive that time frame, even in what you just said, I know one of them has to be passion. Yeah, you know I mean? just that's in, what I was just, just thinking. Every and what your was art was, like, and what you were just saying is, like, it wasn't like I did this because I could use this moment to grow my brand. It was like I'm really passionate about this, mm -hmm. and I allowed that to fuel my, my art and my craft, and it elevated the business. Right. So a question I wanted to ask y'all, like, what do y'all think about, one, that stat, and then, two, like, how to thrive in business and get to those those milestones? I guess I'll take it first. First of all, the stat crazy. Bro, I said the same yeah, thing. I didn't know. Like when you when you said this stat, I'm like, dang, people really don't make it out here. But it makes sense though, because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It really, it really hard. is. I think, we, I think that shows you like when you really are thinking about, I want to do this. I want to be an entrepreneur. It's like, but I feel like that just be it. Usually people just have that thought, like I want to do this, and then right. you start doing it, or the problems come, and then and it's like, that uh, status. I don't real. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what you think, Bloody? Um. How I long? Mean, how long you? How long you been doing it now? How long you been in business for yourself? Um, since two thousand eighteen, I guess, or like two thousand nineteen ish. So, so a couple like four years. years. Yeah, like four years. Um, and it it definitely wasn't a plan. I kind of like got pushed slash pushed myself into it because you know, I yeah, yeah, yeah it just yeah. was it like all the all the signs were there and it's like you could be stubborn or you could not be stubborn so. Like y'all were saying, I feel like you definitely um, got to have the passion for it and the talent for it. Like, and talent can be, you could practice things, but you got to have, like, the initial interest, passion, right. talent. Um, because when you're in business for yourself, it's days where you make thousands of dollars, and it's days where you make zero dollars. But the bills still got to get paid either way. So, you know, you got to, like, have a reason to wake up and, like, yeah, want to do it. Yeah. Mike, how about you? What kept you going? Yeah, I think it's just... You know what she's saying, it's just my whys. I have like a lot of whys. Of course, family, bu building generational wealth. Like, that's just, I just need to be able to leave something like mm -hmm. that's like super established and stuff. Because again, back to my little pro rec stuff, I'm always like, no, we love it. Love, I we love it. Watch Hidden Colors. That like motivated yeah. me. I could watch it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And when you just really think of like how the transition of slavery, like, how we literally had nothing. We had to start from scratch, but we we still kind of behind. Like mm -hmm. we can't pass down acres and acres of land. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of us are, but 
the magnitude of that it's yeah. not at is like it really sucks. So I'm trying to just get to that point where I can like buy land, pass that on, buy houses, pass that on. And again, even my business, even it's not that, just the wealth that it can um, take. Um, and also, just I really want to be big. I want to be global, like real <laughs> live global. I mean, I've had a few orders, Canada, Australia, um, the UK, but I want to be like super, like where I'm doing a fashion show overseas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So your competitive nature kicked in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to be that. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> say competitive. More so, I just want to be big. I just, I really do. I like, and I want it to be more upscale too. I want to, I'm, I really want to like be locked in completely with like a lot of celebrity clientele and mm -hmm. just like people that really like you know i'll spend a thousand dollars on a hat <laughs> thousand dollars on a hat but no your stuff crazy though like we was looking yeah, at the yeah, website we and we was like yeah this is this is this is wild mm -hmm. like how, how long did it take you to make a t-shirt um not really long maybe an hour really did it always long. take an hour like, um no i feel like my work keeps growing keep it gets more detail over okay. time okay. so um, but t-shirts are not even my fave. I really like doing jackets Jacket. more than anything because they last longer. Okay. Um, and bags also too. People love my bags. <laughs> um, and even hats have become my fave now because a lot of guys really like my hats. Yeah. Uh, it's, it was hard branding with guys because sometimes they like, is it a girl brand? I'm like, no, I really want everybody to wear it. Hey, like, listen, we about, we, yeah. about <laughs> we, about, we about to help. We about to help with that. But I just been trying to find the right thing. And you know, Philly guys are specific on what they like no, not too sure. much it's but like, fly okay. <laughs> Philly got like, like I, don't, I don't know about the rhinestones i don't like, know about the pearls like, like but some of them like it too so i'm like still <laughs> trying to lock in with the guys and really gain like their respect like you know we got that's our go-to designer right, but it, right. it's been working a little bit um okay. with them so in your last collection or like one of your more recent collections um we saw that you had a piece that stated expensive tears cost more. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about, like, about what that means and like what inspired it? Okay, so what inspired that was a breakup. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I was just really going through it that Aww. week. So I was like, let me just drop a few t-shirts of like more just to release how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they did pretty good, so right. most of them. Um, they love yeah, them. most of my pieces. How, how, I'm <laughs> they, say, they about how, how old is that collection? How old? How old is that? That was recent. I just dropped that, that um, like three weeks ago, maybe. Oh, oh I'm sorry to hear that. You? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> that. I didn't know. I thought we was years. Thought it was time to heal. Yeah. I didn't know. Stop. No, yeah. Didn't. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's always time to heal. <laughs> yeah. So, so what did the what did the expensive part mean though? You feel what I'm saying? Like um. I don't know. I listen to Mika a lot. That's I guess what I thought. That's, what, that's what I thought. That's yeah. what I, thought. I, thought it was I listen to Mika a lot, and I feel like I'm really like like that. And I feel like mm -hmm. people play with me and make me mm -hmm. hurt. Like you have to understand, like you just yes. a gem. Like it just bothers me. <laughs> it's not the same. I just feel like and yeah. Oh, I see what you said. Oh, I see, see it saying? now. That's hard. That makes it harder. <laughs> well, I love that. Crazy. I love that. Now I gotta say it because before I didn't know what it mean, I'm gonna say it like. Right. I'm gonna let you know. Expensive tears cost more. Yeah, I'm more. a big fan. Yeah. You know I'm saying? a big fan. But he didn't use it like that, though. He used it more. He like, said expensive pain. Yeah, expensive yeah. pain. But he that. used it more like it was like money. Yeah. Like you feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. a like a pain, a Not price more to so success. The emotion, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? That's how he was using it. She using it like you dropped the bag, and that's gonna hurt. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's how I'm gonna use it. <laughs> that's <laughs> how I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm cracking. All right. So can you uh? Can you talk about some of the, the, the personal hurdles you had to face uh, to start Piss Posh or some of the, the business hurdles you had to face once you began Piss Posh? Because it's always. Um, so one I probably haven't talked about in a while. Um, this is a story in college. Um, so I was I got reached out to by an organization that was on campus. It was like, hey, we would love to do a fashion show with you, have it on campus and stuff like that. Um, just come with the designs and, you know, orchestrate it. And they did. They got it was going to be like um, in a building on a campus and stuff like that. Um, because I was growing, the news reached out to me, radio station, to like uh, other newspapers in the city. Like it, I got a, like a lot of coverage just on the momentum of it building up. And the university didn't like that. They were like, um, it looks like you're trying to use us to promote your brand. And not like pay for the venue, and I'm like, well, they reached out to me for fashion show. Usually, I do my fashion shows off campus, so they basically told me, you know, since your news interview, 
we'll have to charge you. And this was two days before the fashion show. This was, was the institution wow. telling you. Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't say the whole, because you know it's different departments. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of people yeah. respected right. me and was like, I got letters from the school like, oh my God, we're so proud of you. But this was a specific org- uh, all department that was over organizations. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they basically was like, you got two days to come up with There's the somewhere. venue fee for this if you want the show to continue. Mind you, we had already given out tickets. It was a free fashion show. So I had already given out like a lot of tickets. It was like we gave out like nine hundred. Wow. Um, to like campus students and stuff like that. Um, so what I had to do was, and at the time I had already resourced to like, I made like ninety pieces for that show, mm-hmm. and I was building sets, like going to Home Depot, like building like sets for the actual fashion show. So I spent a lot of money. So at that time, you hit me up two days before. I'm like, what am I gonna do? Right. And it was like five o'clock on Friday. The show was on. Not two days before. The show was on Tuesday, but it was Friday. They told me. Okay. They, I had to give the money in on Monday, 9 a.m. How much was the, the fee? Woman to me. If, you, um, if you remember. Like 1500 1500 by Monday. Yeah. So this is what I did. I sat there. I cried. I'm like, really? You're going to make me pay? <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to show them wrong because they think you shutting me down. Mm. So what I did was I stayed up all night, and I was like, you know, let me drop a flyer real quick to tell everybody I'm having a cookout tomorrow. I was like, I'm going to have a cookout. I hit up this boy I knew that owned a store, like, down the street from my apartment. I'm like, can I throw an event, like, at the store and outside? Um, it's going to be, like, a free cookout or whatever. I'm going to have everybody come buy stuff. So uh, I stayed up all night. I did a bunch of hats mm. and, like, whatever I could get up. I got up in the morning, went to the grocery store, like, bought sodas, hot dogs, all of that. And, yeah, I was like, everybody, please come out to the barber shop. And I made the money all that day, like. It was like, they was salty. <laughs> I walked in there so proud with the money, yep. like, in the morning, because they was yep. like, you had to be here by 9 a.m. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, here you go. Like, oh. yep, here you go. Because <laughs> you thought you were about to shut it down. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like, I think, the little, like, the woman who called me, I feel like she really thought, like, it was going to be, yeah, like, right. Dark. She was probably sneaking. I was like, I don't have it. In the but I really, smirk. like, flipped the narrative and had it. And even the day of, it was just, like, a lot of things. They were just mm. Trying to, like, to catch you on. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like... Was she salty when you, when you gave her that bread? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you remember that look on her face? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. just like... They always saw it. <laughs> yeah. They but it was just interesting because that was one of the little downfalls with it. But it, I wouldn't blame it on the whole university because, again, I had got a specific letter from, like, the president, vice president, right. like, chancellor and what? stuff. And they was like, we're so proud of you. Like, we've seen your interview. But Aww. this was a whole different department. So I wouldn't say everybody. Was this, was this black people? Hey, it was at a t That's what I'm saying. So this lady that you put... Yeah, I just think she just was looking at it like I was trying to profit, but really I was just trying to throw a free show. It was a free show. I wasn't making money from it. But at the end of the day, even if you you was, like what is the purpose of the university? Well, they were big. That wasn't the only time. They tried to shut me down a lot of time. That specific office, because I would do pop-up shops. She was a hater. She was a villain. She was a hater. I would do pop-up shops every Friday in front of the camp, in front of the calf, but Mm. there's like a $150 vending fee, and I would pay it. Right. Once I, even that day, she was she was just saying all this stuff like you've been doing what you want on campus, doing pop okay. shops in front of camp. Okay. I said I have like all those that. receipts that I oh paid for God. it. Like, what are you talking about? It hater. was just like yeah, a lot of like hating stuff. They I tried to shut me down a few times, and then the next year when I tried to reach out to do the, the show in another venue, they kind of just like didn't um, accept my like submission to mm-hmm. one. I was like, you know what, it's fine. Hater. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that that story really just made me happy for some some reason. Like the emotion I felt yeah, was it. happiness. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that you walked in there and put that money on right the table there. like that. And say you ain't got a counter, it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I was so happy, like wow, I really just made this money. And the night before. Like, Mind you, I had to put out money just to make the cookout be something. Get but just DJ, the fact you thought of it like that, right. and then right. came up with it, and then right. did it, and then you had to what make new product for the for the cookout. Yeah, right? and yeah. those hats That's I had to sell was hats I was going to give away at the show. The wow. first hundred people that walked in the door was going to get a hat automatically. Oh, it was crazy, wow. but it worked out in my favor because that show elevated it more. It was a really good sh- turnout. I love that people there. I love it because it's like she said. First, I cried. It's like. After I get my emotion, right. yeah, I get my emotion out of the way, but then I'm going to get to it. Right. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get to it right after that. Then I got right to yeah, it. I'm going to get right yo, to it. Yo, that's beautiful, yo. I'm so glad we asked that question. Mm-hmm. Was it, was it, is it any more stories? Any more crazy A&T stories? <laughs> <laughs> Not A&T. You know, um, I had a situation one time where uh, somebody had, like, broken into my apartment and, like, took everything. And they realized I had to, like, start from scratch. It was when, crazy. When, are you serious? When, when and where was that this? That happened 2018. Right after graduation. Wow. So it happened at college? Yeah. Okay. But I lived off campus. But a lot of people knew where I lived mm-hmm. um, and stuff. Um, 
Yo, yeah, what's they up with the just, hating though? Like, what is it going was crazy. on? You feel what I'm saying? The administration hating the, the mm-hmm. whoever broke. I into think, the but crib. you know, I'm not gonna say it was a lot of hating because I really was highly Drunk. loved. Right, right. People so of course was, it was there more were like little right. random yeah. ants out of a big crowd of people that loved me. It like was so. Too. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, somebody like basically like took all my inventory. I had to like literally refund a lot of people. It put me behind on orders, and that was definitely been a struggle. Yeah. It's still kind of struggle now, just trying to like. It's always been a domino effect of always trying to catch up and like whatever because yeah. it really like messed me up because at that point I wasn't painting I started graphics too so I was selling sweatsuits wow. two piece sets graphic tees a lot of stuff that people had ordered um, and it really hurt me that was like really That's devastating insane. I was like what the heck so, <laughs> yeah. so so well you probably wouldn't even know like to see people in your stuff and not know if they bought it or not mm, right I don't know I think they I, some I just felt they threw it away maybe. Cause it's just like they just destroyed you, everything. You think they just broke in the crib, stole this? I don't think it was. Into, I think it was like purposely more so to like just just mess up your whole just, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like stuff they wrote on the wall oh, or okay, ripped okay. up newspaper articles. I had, I had like newspaper oh, articles wow. of my stuff. I had a backdrop in my um, work area where a lot of people signed it throughout the years, and they ripped that. It. it was like it just seemed more like. Just just trying to get you down, but I'm not gonna hold you that following year. I had over 20 shows up and down the East Coast, so it was like Got you right. did that, but it brought so many more people in that loved me. Like it was so funny. You did that, but I'm gonna get right back to it every time. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That seemed like just your personality type. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, like a real serious character treat. Right. Like another thing, like so, all your pieces are one on ones, right? Not all. Some I'll do mm-hmm. like bulk. Okay. Like, do but like, you still doing this by hand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like. Could you talk a little bit about like the the process that it takes, the materials, is the specific materials that you're using, I guess, to to go into so your shirts? To I'm more like designs? a mixed media person. Like I'll paint, but I also like. That's why I say I'll have to show y'all my more intricate pieces that are already sold. Like I'll work with like straight denim, but create artwork out of the denim, not even touch paint, or wow. like artwork out of like fur. Like I've done like a fur denim jacket collection. Um, mm. So I work with different types of material. I'm just I like really being abstract and stuff you don't think of. I took a Dickies jacket and used balloon material from like foil balloons to make pish posh out in like a design. I know it's going like crazy, but I really like using like <laughs> things that's like outside. I would have to show it to you, <laughs> you and be like, and you took you no, there. you know I was talking about a different Dickies shirt. That's why you asking me this. What? You had a different Dickies shirt on there. It was a, a series that you did like of. I guess just a representation of women's bodies. Mm-hmm. And it was like brown. Black Rain Saga, that's what I call it. It's that was what? beautiful. Thank you. That was beautiful. So and that? I saw it sold out and I was salty. But <laughs> I'm gonna drop more. I'm gonna drop more. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> cool. Cool. But no, I was gonna say, like, if those is the types of things, like, I feel like when I saw it sold out, it helped me to see, like, the variety of things that you offer. So yeah. even though I couldn't get it, I was a little sorry that I missed it. <laughs> but like just to be able to see it was crazy to see the different things that you were able to create. Yeah. Just to leave that up there, I think was crazy. Yeah, I really like that. So that design started three years ago. I did a canvas collection. It was called Black Rain Saga. I I had a book. I like urban novels. I had a book okay. called Black Rain Saga. And I just ripped the pe- pages out, covered them on canvas, and then did the girls on there. Wow. Um, And that like sold really, really well. Okay. And I was like, I want to bring it back, but put it on clothing so that's why i did, that's the did that. that's so creative yeah. what's what, what what piece are you most proud of like that's some it's so hard because i have so much stuff i have pieces that people might tag it tag me in it and i'd be like dang i, I forgot did i did it right. <laughs> i have done so many pieces um what's my favorite right it's now really what's your favorite hard. right now it's so hard i did a virtual piece that really went viral okay when he passed away yeah. it was on the dickies um i really like that Okay. I took like a few hours to do that. What um, was the piece that was like one of your hardest to make? Hmm. Hardest. I don't know. I don't think it's just women that think I can do. I'll Love teach that. myself. <laughs> <laughs> could you say that into the mic for right. me? I don't please? think there's a limit on things I could do. Like I'll teach myself. You know, I didn't know how to sew for some time. You a year ago, I dedicated my like entire energy into learning how to sew. I bought a sewing machine, uh, everything I needed, because I'm like I'm about to teach myself because. Um, yeah, I just want to be more established as being all the titles that I am, designer, artist, creative director, all that stuff. So I really was like, I'm going to teach myself how to sew because 
once I do that and really master it and I'm able to do gowns mm-hmm. on top of that, then it'll be like infinite. Yeah. I've done like prom um attire for people. Wow. How was that? The prom girls are a handful. Not dresses, more so suits. Oh. I did, I had a client in Atlanta and he's like super big. His name is Mateo. He's like a rapper, but he's big. Yeah. Um I did a prom jacket for somebody and well, suit and they actually won prom king in oh, it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm like really just trying to get some more intricate pieces <sighs> and uh, just expand that way. It's so much. I feel like it's not enough time no, to do everything. To do everything I want. You know, I, I'm in also into film. I like creative directing, and I want to get into videography and creating aesthetics. So I'm good at branding. I feel like the way I moved Pish Posh and the way yeah. I'm able to like go in, create my own commercials and my own visuals and stuff like that, and even flyers. I want to get more into media content for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you really feel like you can do anything mm-hmm. and be doing it. Like, yeah. that's like, hey, that's the like, important part. Oh, so I'm doing currently it. managing two artists. <laughs> what type like of management artists? as well? Not not artists, but like musicians. Musicians. Yeah. Word? Mm-hmm. Wow, you wear all the hats. Yeah. How is that going? It's lit. I love it. It's so <laughs> fun. It's so fun. Because I was already, I feel kind of connected industry. I know A&Rs. I know like also like rappers and stuff because I've designed for some. Designing for Drake. And I'm like, you know, I just love music. Music has always been me. I have playlist that I curated on Apple Music. I'm like, follow me on Apple Music. Wow. Listen to my vibes. So I just like the music and shit. I just like to be able to see something and like really see it from like the start and to blossom. Yeah, like that's true. my goal right now to just get it to skyrocket so I could just see how I can be able to help somebody else. Wow. We're going to have to bring you on the team. We're going to have a, a separate meeting after this. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the uh what's the what's the, the, the most profit you made off a of piece that you sold? Hmm. My jelly bags. They mm-hmm. went crazy two years ago. I posted them on Twitter and I love Lauren Hill. I had put her voice over on um one of a video I made, just time lapsed of me working. Mm-hmm. And I put it on Twitter. I fell asleep. I woke back up and went viral. And I had like. That's like five times you went viral. You got to give us the recipe. Oh, it's <laughs> very <laughs> often. It's so often. Oh, it's very often. <laughs> but I like, I made like 45000 in one day. Like just <laughs> one of jelly bags. Mind you. Mm. <laughs> they were just like so like tiny and mm. I was selling them for like mm. <laughs> oh god we gotta take a moment you know it got so crazy I'm yeah. like I'm not even gonna do this to myself I know people gonna be upset with me because I gotta paint them all I'm gonna take, delete this post but I know it would have went even crazier if I would have hey, kept it up it was only up for it. it was not not even up for the whole day yeah. it just mm. was like you know let me delete this because <laughs> it was a lot painting them bags, a lot. I had to really start locking in and timing myself, making sure I get a bag done in every three minutes. Wow. That's so would you crazy. say that was like your biggest profit you've made from like a collection of pieces? Definitely. Like a, definitely. Yeah. The I Hope hat was good, um, but this was definitely like, this is crazy. Because even when I deleted it, by so many people yeah. wearing it, the it was still drawing in. Yeah. That whole summer, I was just like, like uh, <laughs> the yeah. I'm sure it still was circulating yeah. even after you did yeah. What's the What's the most pieces you ever made in a month? Do you know? Or it definitely got to be the jelly bags. Well, right. hats are a good thing too. My signature hat was something from the beginning of like Pish Posh. And I can paint like 100 of them in one night. Mm. So it's like, people always love them. they like, I love your signature hats. I just had someone... One of my friends, he's a good, he's so like sweet. He used to like just bring me Gatorade during my fashion shows and stuff. But he hit me up the day. Gatorade because you was exhausted. Yeah, a hundred <laughs> hats. This game day, and I'm like <laughs> she working. But he hit me up the other day and he was like, "E, you need anything?" I'm like, "Nothing." I mean, my sales been a little off, but you know, just buy something maybe. He was like, "Here's one fifty. I want a signature hat." Mm, Mind you, my signature up. hats. I sold them as cheap as a dollar at a point. Wow. <laughs> so to see him just drop that, I'm like, you know, That's I really can up. elevate Sorry. and like yeah, bring my price point up because people are willing to pay just Chip not often. Pitch Pod is like a, a household name, I feel like now. I have people that have tatted it on them. Oh. Like mm. three different people. Mm. And I'm about to learn how to tat so I could just start Do doing it myself. everybody that <laughs> Oh you would have Oh, you want a pitch posh tat? <laughs> no, yes. I had a, a customer when I first moved back to Philly, he he bought jelly bags for like his girlfriend, I think, or something. He was like, you know, I just really love your brand. I want to get pitch by tatted. Can I get it tatted? I'm like, sure. sure. <laughs> so I went and I vlogged it. And then from once I posted him, everybody was like, I want it tatted too. I want it tatted too. So I got like a few other people that's coming up 
that like want it done and I'm going to go out and vlog them. I got a girl from Connecticut that wants me to go up there That's to it. like vlog her getting it. That's love. That is so, crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. It really <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it is. is. It's, it's like unreal sometimes. I just be yeah. like, I don't like soak in it and be like, wow, this is crazy. So I just, I kind of like passive, I guess, but I try to mm-hmm. remain like humble and just like, uh, I was really about to say but, pish posh when you said it, but I was like, no, I ain't going. <laughs> but no, that's crazy. So you could you could really talk heavy, like many yeah, really touch like, your name out this joint. Mm-hmm. Oh, girls <laughs> too, girls too, mm-hmm. girls too though, girls too. And it's big. It's like on his arm here. Then I got a friend; she has one here. Um, yeah, and a couple other people. They just like I gotta get it. I gotta get it. Uh, I'm excited for that, but I want to really learn how to tat. So I could. I want to do other stuff. I hope I don't get to that point, but I really just want to do the signature for people. Yeah. Like if they hit me up, like, yeah, I could do it for you. Cause they'll, then they'll make it even better. Like and they got it from it. me. Yeah. 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 And they'll be connected to the brand forever. forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We looked on your, your, your page and it said that you was recognized on the BET top 25 black owned businesses. Mm-hmm. What, what was that like when that happened? How did that happen? Like it was so sorry. random. Somebody actually probably tagged me in it on Twitter and I was like, wow, I didn't know this. <laughs> Wait, that's how you dope. found out? That's how you Yeah. Wow. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. So you didn't like enter or nothing? No contest, no nothing. Mm-mm. A lot of my publications really came just of just, I guess, the hard work that I was putting in and getting recognized. Like, uh, I had like a few like big like names like that. Um, Complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, got Complex? Re- um, I had styled uh, this music group that I know that was going out to LA and they wore it and they got best dress like for their like complex like you know recap but yeah. like complex time yeah. so it was like really dope on that I have like an interview with Yes Weekly like just like a couple it's been like um, a few but BET that really shocked me because I was like I didn't even know, I didn't even but know. I appreciate I you for tagging me in this because I probably would have never knew. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just cool when, you know, we're able to just Google ourselves and we just see, like, endless, like, stuff and, like, recognition and right. stuff. Is black people your core demographic? or or? I would say, but I'm really trying to get their white clientele, too. I mean, okay. I have, like, a few white clients, but I really want more of them. Yeah, I yeah. want to just the white people don't be it overall. Yet. As much as the black people. Yeah, I, I think it's because, I don't know. Have y'all ever really just looked at y'all Instagrams? It's like, we are our own world. Yes, They're right. their own world. Yes, yeah. I'm just trying to enter trying into to, that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really trying to get my stuff on Dow's Kill, because I know that would be that bridge. Okay. Because they have, like, a, a large white clientele. So, wow. Dow's Kill is big on getting, like, up-and-coming designers onto their website. So, I know that would help me. Um, and just other, I guess, major big corporations that buy from brands. Yeah and stuff to expand it. So you talked about how um, you style for, for some famous people. Can you talk about some of the famous people that you've styled? Yeah, so um, one, well, I didn't actually style for Big Sean, but I gave him a piece because I got selected for, he does this thing um, in Detroit, because you know that's where he from, he does like a little mini festival, but he did this convention type of thing where it was like a contest where like, he picked, like, 20 designers around the country to come to Detroit and, like, pitch a sneaker design to Puma. Wow. So I went there for, like, a weekend. I did that. I didn't win, but I got him a piece. Mm. He really loved it. He was so hype. Mm. <laughs> I just posted a recap video of, like, him coming up to me because he was really excited about my sneaker design that I created. Okay. Um, And then I did a piece for Dave East for one of his music videos. Mm. Um, It's called Prosper. Uh, It was, like, a custom piece of his daughter on the back. Mm. He had his daughter in the video, so he just wanted to, like, wear that in that. Um, I did something for P and B, a boogie, um, what's that girl name? Kalani. Mm. Um, right now, I've, I've been connecting with a lot of Philly up and coming artists yeah. um, that are going to be doing some shoots soon. Okay, I'm going to wrap some coming soon. Okay. But um, I give this something to like Jada Kiss, um, somebody's boyfriend. He was connected to him because he uh, manages an artist that was signed under um, uh, So Rasty. Okay, Jada hey, Kiss. Yeah. Um, and just with, like, a few other people, um, I feel like my momentum is going to be, before I was just, like, always hunching, like, let me get them on it. But now I really more so the more so the celebrities come in. Come a person you. that I definitely have put a lot of pieces okay. in was Ruby Rose. Um, I had actually did a collab. Uh, well, I would, we both were hosting on the same mansion party mm. before she ever blew up, like, when she was just dating uh, Playboy Cardi at the time. Okay. It was in Atlanta. It was so dope. But she was really a sweetheart, and I was like, you know, I'm going to give her some pieces. And yeah. then, like, she just, she was, has wore them, like, heavily, like, right. one of her, like, videos and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of any other people. Um, that's it for now. 
for um, now. For now. Yeah, for now. Right. Emphasis <laughs> on for now. Yeah, I have like a lot of people uh, that I do want to get stuff to um, that I really admire. I, of course, I really love uh, Rihanna. She has grown on me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the next goal. That's mm-hmm. what it's Rihanna. Go. Um, and a person that I love here that's from here is Milano. I really admire yeah. her. Like, she's okay. so sweet. Okay. <laughs> that's fire. So, so what's the next step? Where are you taking it from here? What's the. So, again, getting from? into the galleries, I just want to brand my real intricate. Home artwork, and I'm getting into decor. I started a pitch by decor page, so I'm gonna be doing like custom furniture, pillows, stuff like that. I've already started pillows. I just haven't made. I haven't dropped it yet. I will probably drop it by next week. But I started a pitch by decor page. Um, I'm just always finding new ways to the stuff, and I also have another business called I Am Peace. Um, it touches based on the third eye and just um, eye protection and stuff. Um, it's like little pendants, but I also do like custom like jackets for it as well too. Okay. Um, it's still in this growing phase. I've done a few little pop-up shops with it, but it's not there yet, but it's going to get there. Um, and I guess I'm just always finding new stuff to do. Okay. So you got a lot actually. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a lot. Yes, <laughs> it's a lot. I'm all over the place. It's so funny. That's, but it all connects creative. into who I am like, yeah. as a creative. It's yeah. like, it's, it's endless. It seemed like you got a lot of creative energy, like mm-hmm. that you put in a whole bunch of different things, like artist management is crazy and then decor and then like the wild shirts and all that that's all of it is amazing so (laughs) if you had to give advice to a a young girl like yourself trying to to break into to art or fashion or anything just trying to follow their dreams what would that advice be um definitely hmm. i want to narrow it more down to philadelphia okay because i feel like Understanding my transition from North Carolina to here is diff- completely different mindsets. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, everybody has that great hustle mentality. That's how I stood out down there. Mm-hmm. But as far as the will to connect with people and understanding what you put out, you get back. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of things I probably accomplished also just goes back to my character, scratch the hard work. Mm. So I try to tell people to, like, be good, like, be a good person. And, like, even if it's not you, just do good by others, encourage others to do good because that stuff really circles back. Like I just, I tell people a lot, like I don't, even if with the little fail moments that I had, I always came out on top. And I think it's just just because how I looked at it differently on the energy I put out. And I I wanted to emphasize on Philly because I feel like it's been a little depressive being here, like just with like how everybody moves. I mm-hmm. guess not Compared like family to, oriented. Yeah, yeah. kind of like how it's different. I know everybody don't know each other, but when I was at A and T or just being around like a lot of like minded black people, they were more family oriented. I didn't have to know a person for somebody to just speak mm-hmm. kind words to me or whatever. Like I do have to give credit to my neighbor who helped me build my website, who helped me learn how to um, design it, what I need, the steps I need to take as far as business cards, stuff like that. And he didn't owe me that, but he just did it just off the strength of just, like, connecting and stuff, and I'm forever grateful for that. But I just always tell people, like, definitely connect with people and, like, just push good energy because it's really going to come back. And, yeah. just, of course, when it comes into the business, just make sure you're really happy with it and stuff because you'll really just level up, like, constantly if you know you're comfortable within it. You know, some mm-hmm. people – Probably might do something and he might not be happy. It probably might fail because you right. don't got that real push or urge into it. You don't got the why. Like yeah. You said, like you said. Well, thank wow. you. <laughs> yeah, thank He's you about wow. <laughs> Seriously. No, it was, it was it's beautiful. Thank you. I think just to see everything that you've been able to do just through, from your passion and your real creative energy is just crazy. Like literally every area that you've jumped into has been successful thus far. So. Right, right, right. We well, gotta put the city on. Yeah, seriously. Right. Mm-hmm. We got to. Where can the people find you at if they want to, you know, look into some of your designs or reach out to you or yeah, just support? So my Instagram is the Pish Posh Girl. I'm not on TikTok yet. What are you trying it's to be? <laughs> Actually, I did make it. I'm just not. I haven't posted Active. like yet. Yeah. But that's the Pish Posh Girl as well too. My website is pishposhworld um, dot com. Um, it's a lot of little gems on there. I got my one on one collection. About to start the decor um, and stuff. And I also do custom one-on-ones.